Our division separates us from the Lord. Satan's ultimate desire is to separate us from Jesus, thus from the Father. That's his ultimate desire. That's death. And he comes to kill. What we don't seem to realize, but that devil knows well, and this is what I was saying, is that it is a far easier task of separating believers from one another and that accomplishes the same purpose of separating us from Jesus Christ. Think about this. Think about it. Pray about it. What I quoted before, then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, that the ex to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. I mean, I've done a lot of counseling in, in my ministry over the years. And I've had people come to me and say, well, you don't understand. I love the Lord, but I don't love my wife anymore. I say, you liar. I've, I've said that to me. I say, you liar. You're lying to yourself. You can't lie to me. And I promise you, you can't lie to God. You don't love God any more than you love that brother that you say, well, I don't like him no more. That's the word of God. You better be prepared to answer for that. That's why I'm saying if you have a problem, if you're separated, if, if unforgiveness has caused you to divide from somebody else, run to them. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't take your offering to the altar until, even if you know your brother has something against you, go to them. Deal with it. Don't tolerate the vision of the body of Christ. Because I'm going to tell you, God is not going to. And if this is the last thing that Jesus prayed, for going to the cross. It had to be very important. Oh, that's, oh my goodness. It had gracious. to be very, very important. Trust me. It oh, is, goodness. to quote my dear bride, <laughs> very, very important. Listen, I'm, okay, I'm going to get very serious here, and you may not like this. And if you don't, I hope you forgive me. <laughs> there are thousands. Mm. No, no. There are tens of thousands of denominations in the Christian church today. Those are divisions that we call good, that we boast in, that we celebrate. Oh, to recall the words of the prophet Isaiah who said, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. And people will say to me, Well, you don't understand, Brother Allen. Oh, those people down the street, they take up the offering before the announcements. We don't believe in that. Or, well, you know, they baptize, they dip frontwards instead of dipping backwards. It's ridiculous. It would appear from the scriptures that I quoted, all these different scriptures, that the issue of unity is both significant and serious. It's something that the body of Christ needs to face and to deal with today. Now, I, I know, and I've been, in, I've been involved in this for 40 years, that there are efforts taking place in many areas towards an ecumenical movement. And while that may sound good, it must be approached prayerfully. Bear in mind that Satan is an imitator, a counterfeiter, often creating illusions of godly things. He's the one that said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Isaiah 14, 14. And Paul wrote to the Corinthians, again, 2 Corinthians, no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11, 14. You know, not long ago, on another trip to where we were spending a lot of time over in the UK here, I was invited to go to a large interdenominational prayer meeting in Manchester, not far from where we are right now. It was a monthly meeting organized by a group that has, they've had significant success in bringing together many people from many different denominations for fellowship. And, and while I salute that, I mean, I think that's, that's good, the effort, the underlying desire is good. 
Indeed, it's an idea that truly motivates my effort in writing this work. I felt compelled to tell them at that time that true unity in the body of Christ is not when Baptists and Lutherans and Episcopalians, etc., 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 come together to fellowship. True unity is when there are no more Baptists and Lutherans and Episcopalians and etc. and etc. But only people who follow the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, Amen. on those paths of righteousness that lead to the throne of the Father. For this is the truth. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Um, Philippians 2, 9-11. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. Acts 4, 12.